is Pastor Patty Ellis with Harvest New Life Church International, Harvest New Life Studios. It is a beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad in it. We thank you for joining us today. I have in the studio Apostle Charles Ellis, the leader of this ministry. We thank you for just continuing just to support this ministry and continuing to stay plugged in with us. We have some exciting things as we go forth in, in the ministry and as we go forth each and every day. And with all of these broadcasts that we're, we're pushing forward, we just thank you that you, you just tune in and just continue just to listen. There's so, such powerful words that are coming forth. This morning was just a, a powerful word coming from the apostle. And we, we just want you to, to, every time that you listen, and you tune in, that you really get these scriptures. We always say, write them down, take notes, because there's going to be a time that you want to go back and, and refer to them. Amen. And you might even write down the title. So that's way if you like, you know, a week ago, I listened to this podcast and I, I was wondering what he was talking about, who she was talking about. And you'll have that written down so you know that the title of it, and you can go back and listen to it. That's the beauty of these broadcasts that they're they're live right now, but then they're also you can go back and listen a week, a month, even a year from now. They'll be right there in the system for you to to go back and reference. So we just thank you for that. And today we're going to talk about above the chaos. And I want to just kind of talk about that before we we get started and before we open up with prayer. But let's go ahead and um, just get ourselves settled. Let's get to a point where we're just we're ready to hear the word of God Amen. and just relax. be right here right now. Just, just relax. relax. Take a deep breath get right into it. and just relax. Get your anchor team going. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's go ahead. With there's there's so many different buttons going on in the background. So many things happening in the background. But we thank you for continuing just to be with us. So let's go ahead and open up with prayer so we can get started. We can just get focused. We thank you, Lord, for this day that you've brought with us yes. today. We thank you Lord, for waking us up this morning. We are here to see another day, to be able to go forth and speak yes. the word of God and just really to be, be all together as one. Lord, help us to forget about yesterday. Yes, help us to forget about even this morning. Yes, help us to forget yes, about last week, yes, last month. Be, so we can be right here, be present with you. Yes, yes, help us to be settled. Open yes, up our spiritual yes, ears. Open up our spiritual eyes. Yes, so we may hear and see the direction that you have for us today as we go forth in your word. And Lord, as, as we are vessels for you, Lord, clean all of us out yes, and put Jesus. all of you in. So this is coming straight from the kingdom. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus, Amen. 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 And we are going to talk about above the chaos. What does that even mean? Chaos. When when we give that the titles of, of what we're talking about, it's really to just get some some thinking going. There are so many things happening in this world. There's so many things happening in, in our lives, in our lives, in your lives, every single day. If you just turn on the news, you, you'll hear about all kinds of stuff happening. But we always have to remember who we are. Amen. That we are children of the Most High God. Amen. That we have amazing power in our lives. Yes, Lord. Yes, we do. So when I talk about above the chaos, where are we living? Amen. And when I say chaos, and maybe I kind of made that kind of that statement because we kind of all know what chaos is. Yeah. But really just circumstances. As long as we live and breathe, we're going to have circumstances in our life. Amen. Where do we live? Amen. Do we live above? Amen. Or do we live in or do we live below Amen. and let's see what, what that means and when we live above that's what we're part of the kingdom Amen. we're part of the power Amen. remember it's not not of us 
but it's of our Heavenly Father. Amen. The kingdom is, is amazing. It's, it's power. Yes. And are we connected to it? Yes. Or do we live in our circumstance? Yes. Do we live in that chaos? Yes. We have a choice. When we have given our life over to God, when we've given our life over to the kingdom, it's no longer about us. We get separated. And how are, how are we living? And I pose that question to you, to you out there, to our listeners. Where, where are you? Let's look at it. Um, and I jotted down some notes when I was going through these scriptures. And really, do, do we live within our, our circumstances? Do we live below our circumstances? Mm-hmm. That means like we, we have, what does that, that bring? When we live below our, our circumstances, we live within, within all that chaos. Yes. Mm-hmm. We're in, we're dissatisfied. Mm-hmm. We're, we may be angry. Because mm-hmm. remember, we're, we're wrapped up in what's mm-hmm. going on. Mm-hmm. When we put our hands into it, when we, when we guide it, our lives ourselves, mm-hmm. That's living, that's living below. That's Amen. living with, within that chaos. Amen. There's just tons of dissatisfaction. And you think about it, and I've thought about some things that I hear and things that maybe I've even said in the past when living within the circumstances. Think, think about this. Mm-hmm. You, you may say, I don't care. Whatever. Have you ever heard kids say that? Have we ever said that? Whatever. Blow off stuff. Yeah. Just blow it off. That that I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Um, that never mind. Mm. Think think about that. That that's you get frustrated and those things start to come out of your mouth. That's not my problem. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so when we live like that, that's living in the instability. Yeah. We're not stable. Yeah. Yeah. But when we live above. Yeah. When we live on God directed in our life, Mm -hmm. we have that stability. Mm -hmm. We have that peace. Mm -hmm. We have that contentment. We have that joy. We still have the circumstance. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we have, we live above that. Mm -hmm. We live what we can't see. And the apostle always said, the apostle always says, and I remember he said something like about that this morning, mm-hmm. that you know we, it's not about what we we can see, mm-hmm. it's like how is God directing our lives, and are we listening to it? Mm-hmm. Are we rising above? Yeah. So let's go ahead and get into the scripture. Amen. And I wanted just to paint that out so you can kind of see what what we're talking about today, okay. because we have what God brings us into the scriptures and God brings us into power. What does he give us every single day? What is, what has he laid for us so that we can rise above? He gives us his word. Yeah. Doing his capability, doing him his power. Amen. And, all, I mean, and is it, is it ours? Yeah, no, it's not yours. It's, it's not ours. Is it? We become a conduit. Mm-hmm. No. If we're going to walk with him, then we're going to reign with him. Mm-hmm. You walk by yourself. You reign by yourself. And think about what that could be. Mm-hmm. How, do, how, do we, how do we walk with him? Amen. How, do, how do we get to that point where Amen. we're living above our Amen. circumstance? Amen. What, what do we have? That's yes. right. You got you to have that. Mm-hmm. With the mouth. That's what Romans 10. Mm-hmm. Confession is made. Amen. Yeah. With the mouth. That matter of fact, that's how church confession. Most churches don't have confessions. It's just, it's just do what you like to say. Just do what you want. Do what you will. I mean, most, you know, I'm, I'm not pulling away from our subject, but mm-hmm. when you're dealing with chaos, you know, you, you don't see a lot of ministries. You know, ministries are now cast on what you call the uh, economic structure, the number, how many people I have. They they engage more towards entertainment. Mm-hmm. You see people bringing motorcycles on stage. 
Uh, people bringing tractors on stage. It's a lot of entertainment. It's like you're going to a show now. You know, it's, it's gauged towards entertainment, and entertainment pulls the flush. And when you pull the flush, there's no more confession. It comes from confession to entertainment. So we've been amused by the entertainment. Mm-hmm. So a lot of mega ministries you see this damn time, it's just based on a whole lot of just entertainment. It, they amuse you. They got all the lights. They got all the shows. They got all these things. So we never get a chance to understand the true confession of Christ. And we can touch the heart because we're too shadowed over by entertainment. Amen. So the chaos, we, we, we pay more attention to the chaos more than the word. That's so, right. You know. And that may feel, you know, that that um, entertainment, I mean, we like to be entertained, right? Yeah. You know, as that's kind of natural. We fall. Mm-hmm. We like to be entertained. It feels good at the yeah. moment, and it's yeah. wow. Yeah. But once you leave there and you go back to your life, yeah. what have you been? Just an itching of the ear. Mm-hmm. Some just itch you to make you feel good. And just, just, just a temporary satisfaction, as you say. Right. So you right. Go back to the chaos. You never really above. Like you see, you never really rise above the chaos. Mm-hmm. You just get satisfied a little bit. Then you go right. back to the chaos, what you I you know. you know when when God speaks to us and God gives us these these words and these and, and the preparation I have so many different um examples, you know, that are going through my life and what things that I've experienced with other people that are around me and, and God points us out in his word. And he does this. It's, it's so powerful because it's not, I know that it's coming from the kingdom when we get those scriptures and, and we start to, to delve into it. It's not anything that we can, we can bring it, bring it, but this is what God has given Amen. and he gives it to you. Amen. And we know that this once, how do, how do we rise above that case? How do, how do I get out of the chaos that's in my life? How do I get out of these circumstances? How do I rise above it? We can't always just remove it, you know, the, the circumstances in our life. Mm-hmm. But God gives us his word. Yes, and God, God wants us to communicate with him, not only mm-hmm. just in his word, but in prayer, that we get this direction going yeah. in our lives. Yeah. So let's go ahead and go to the scriptures. Mm-hmm. It's just, it gets us, it gets me excited when we talk about things like this. But let's go ahead and get into the scripture. We're going to be in Philippians 4 today. We're going to be in the New Testament. We're in Philippians 4, and we're going to start at the sixth verse. Mm -hmm. It said, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And can I just take you for, I'm going to take you to the amplified version. Just we're going to stick in that sixth verse. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition, definite request with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. And go again, the mouth. Mm-hmm. Amen. The mouth has to operate. It has, to, it has to, you just said it. If you just look at the scripture for what you just said, it said it right there. And and how when when you talk about the mouth, mm-hmm. um, are we talking about in prayer? Yeah. Are we just talking about just speaking through the day? Yeah. Well, Joshua says you got to constantly meditate. Amen. So it's a continuation, you know. Because I mean, the adversary was well, First Peter five, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, First Peter one and five, I think it's eight. I think it's five and six. You know, so mm-hmm. many vigilant, the adversary. So you gotta That vigilant part is, yeah. is that meditation part. Yeah. That we're meditating on the word, mm-hmm. we're speaking it. Mm-hmm. That this is this is that part of the 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 power that comes from the kingdom. Mm-hmm. And you were talking about in, in the in this morning, mm-hmm. you were talking about about the the enemy because we know that the enemy is is out there. Mm-hmm. Will the enemy touch each one of us? Yeah, every day, every minute. You, know? mm-hmm. you constantly, you know, you 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 never withdrawn from the battle. Mm-hmm. The word of God. That's why He said you got to constantly pray that your request may be known. What is requested you? 
because you know he knows our past, and mm-hmm. this this is where we get to the point. A lot of people miss. It. I ain't got to do as much. I ain't got. I, I'm okay. No, you're not okay. Mm-hmm. When the word says war and battle, it's a constant conflict. Amen. You're in a constant chaos. When Joshua says meditate, you're constantly understanding that the enemy is like a roaring lion. Mm-hmm. That's his job. You see him out in these. Who does the, who does the enemy affect? Who does the enemy enemy go after? Apostles, pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles. Everybody. If you walk on two legs. And how 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 do you does does the enemy come at us? You you mentioned it. Settled. Mm-hmm. You mentioned it too that he knows what we like. Yeah, I mean he knows. I mean that's the thing about mm-hmm. it. I mean that's Paul's whole story about the process when he got caught up in Romans chapter seven, the fifteen. He said. You know, I was a man of conformed, I've been a stick of the law, but at the same time, my flesh is mm-hmm. calling because I've still been vindicated, uh, vindicated, not been vindicated, been victimized by the things I used to do. Mm-hmm. And what Ephesians said, once you know, I trespass and sins in past times, the enemy knows what you used to do. This is how he came from that. But he also, you know, Paul, he leaves that thorn. That's right. That thorn is in us that makes sure we remember where we come from. Mm-hmm. And he said, lest you exalt yourself above measure, lest you get too high and lift it up. Amen. You get too, you get too, uh, you not know, say the word, I kind of say it straight, you get, you get too cocky or arrogant. You just want to put it straight out. I don't need to put it in an intellectual term. I'm just, I'm just going to tell you that's the way it is. When you find yourself being, you know, your stuff on your back, mm-hmm. you get too good. You know, he said that you exalt yourself above measure, and everybody's giving a measure. And, so. and I, I love how you put that. I just, so much is coming back to what you were talking about this morning that, you know, we know that we have that enemy that's out there and he is going to come against all of us. And, and especially when you're doing God's work, when you are following, following the kingdom, mm-hmm. the, that enemy wants to get you off track. And he comes with many, many different ways of getting us off track. Mm-hmm. But in, the, in this scripture, we said, don't, don't fret or have any anxiety about anything. Mm-hmm. This is the part where we're living above. Mm-hmm. That we're still going to have some the circumstances in our lives. Yeah, no, yeah, but grace, you know, mm-hmm. you know when, you, when you walk with Christ, you know, when we're talking to most of you listening to that early message that see what I'm dealing with about the book of Ephesians, mm-hmm. the whole armor, you know, Paul's time Powerful. that he was in prison, mm-hmm. the whole house of rest, mm-hmm. he had a time to evaluate the Roman soldier's army. And that dude was so cold, he made a sermon out of it. He mm, dude looked at the shawl, the feet, the helmet, the spike boots. He made a sermon. He said, this is what the enemy, a, a true soldier is girded properly. Mm-hmm. Now, he's girded properly. He's girded properly to where he can move frequently in the way he needs to move and not hindered by anything. You know, his, 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 it's like a football player. Our suits that we put on, and people play basketball, but their suits are measured because of the difference of the team. But a Roman soldier's army, his gear was for his life. Amen. Football, basketball, there's those suits are for knowing the opposing team. Right. But in the course of a battle, when you got what you call legions fighting together, you mean you got, you got eight to 10,000 different men, don't even know if they're fighting. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you chop your own man up. You know, you don't know, you know. So those guys knew the type of war they were in. They had to move freely. And this is what Paul said about the process he uses a Roman soldier as having been girded by the Holy Spirit. You got to be able to move swiftly. You got to draw your sword, your breastplate. You got to have a mind that's set. If you get injured in the head like a concussion, you can't think right. So you guard it with the helmet. These things help you. If you stroke from the back, Usually the breastplate was a plate that went all the way around the Roman soldier in his mm-hmm. back. It was hard leather of metal. So he was girded from the back and the front. The way he wore his skirt, able him to move freely. Nothing was holding him. If he got stomped on his feet, his boots carried sharp spikes or thorny boots, like, you know, kind of rough boots. Like, I mean, it's, it's mm-hmm. a powerful analogy, like you're saying. Amen. You know? And that's what helps us when yeah. we're when we're ready and we're guarded, we're vigilant, we're meditating on the word, we're meditating with, with our Heavenly Father, these are the things that preparation, this is what builds us builds us up in, in Ephesians 6, just like he was talking about, that that days. this is us getting ready. Yeah, shod. And this is us getting ready. This is how we live above. Yeah. That, yes, there's that, that fight. Yes, yeah. there's that war. 
yes, there's the circumstances in our life. You ready? But we're ready. You ready? We, this is part of what we're doing today. Yeah. Is the preparation? This is us putting on our our um, gear. This is yeah. us getting ready. Yeah. Paul didn't say that. He didn't. When you look at the book of Ephesians mm-hmm. one twenty one, he didn't say that. He didn't say that just to say that. He said that for mm-hmm. a purpose. Right. You look at Ephesians one twenty one. He said, "Far above all, there's things coming: mm-hmm. <laughs> apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, layman, whatever is coming." Amen. You ain't exempt. You ain't holding it out to the point you can't get attacked. You may fight it in different various ways, but at the same time, brother, they're coming at you. And people say they're very easy. I'm blessed and highly favored. Okay. But the devil gives blessings too. Mm-hmm. And if you're not sure up properly with the things you need, if you got any ounce of stuff in you that you know you hadn't got rid of, and you hadn't examined yourself properly, you got an open gap in your your armor. Amen. And that's what he gets that's in. That's a great way to put that, yeah. He gets in, he can get in there. He does because the enemy doesn't fight fair. If the, the enemy wants to win. Accuse of the brother. Mm-hmm. That brother can hit you in the back of the head, rabbit punch you, kick you in that mm-hmm. place. You don't supposed to be kicked that stomp you, you doing anything. Mm-hmm. That's what he do. That's, he's, he's a warrior. And that's you right. got to be a warrior above a warrior. That's what Paul mm-hmm. said, far above all prince, powers, dominions. He said those powers and princes and dominions, they mean all those different ways that the enemy could try to come at you. Very subtle. Just when you think it ain't, he is. Just when you think you got it right, you're wrong. Amen. Let, let, me, let me add to that. Because I was getting this, this picture in my mind. That, okay, when we have circumstances, maybe you're having, you think about something hard that's going on in your life right now. Um, something that you're challenged with. And do you think that if you do X, Y, and Z, it's going to handle it? It's going to control this circumstance in your life. But what what did God say? Mm-hmm. We have to take our thinking out of it mm-hmm. in order to rise above. Mm-hmm. And in that scripture, and I, and I want to read this part again. It says, do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. Mm-hmm. Because when we have that anxiety and we're worrying, we're in that circumstance and all kinds of stuff can come at you mm-hmm. that you're, you're engulfed in it. That means I'm, I'm controlling it. I know what to do. This is what I'm going to do. And you might be talking about it, thinking about it, talking about that circumstance. Mm-hmm. But meanwhile, all this stuff is, is coming at you. That enemy is working and working and working mm-hmm. and stirring up that instability in your life instead of you rising above it. And preparing. The fastest way you'll fall in anything is you get too arrogant. Amen. I just learned that from sports. You get too cocky, you get too lifted up, you think you're above measure, you just send yourself up in the fall. Know what the word of God says in First Peter. First Peter said, Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is like a mm-hmm. roaring lion seeking whom he devour. First of all, he said, Be sober. That's right. You can't do it on your own. No. The power of God comes through humility. That's right. It don't come through arrogance and uplift. I'm better. I'm this. It don't come through entertainment. I can do it. <laughs> when you're doing entertainment, I want you guys to understand what I said. I'm going to take this from this one guy. When you're doing entertainment and you're trapped in entertainment, all kind of lies can flow through that stuff. Mm-hmm. But when you're a person that's true to a confession and understand to teach the people, even though it may be more boring, but it's something to help you in the midst of a battle. Amen. But you got to ask yourself, what ones do you want? Do you want the candy? You want the law. Mm-hmm. They want the candy these days. They want the things that make them feel good. And they want the whole day Bibles to jump up and down and say, I'm blessed and highly favored. But you ain't learned nothing. Because you're too busy filling the fleshly things to make them sound good. Whether they're hearing the true adulterated word of God. That's what the word of God tells you. Mm-hmm. That's when you slip. When you're not solid in your word, you don't understand your word. That's how he settled gets in. The Bible said, be sober, be vigilant. Vigilant means beware of the pitfalls. Entertainment gets you to the point of not examining yourself. You don't look at yourself because you're too you're too caught up in the crowd. Amen. You get caught up in entertainment, you lose the fact that what you came to your confession, you lose that. I mean, I just you know. Amen. That's that's so true. We have to be we have to be vigilant if everything that we do. So let, let me go into the seventh verse. Uh, let's start at the six again. 
Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. We're having that communication with our Heavenly Father. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen, boy. Amen. You got that man back. This is part of, you know, what we're, we're doing of the, in my, my favorite, one of my favorite scriptures is that Romans 12 mm. that, that renewing of our mind. Mm. And we have to do that every single day. Yeah. This is the part with us coming to the scriptures mm. and, and you going to the scriptures each, mm. each and every day. That's the part of that renewing the mind. This is the part of rising above. Mm. Because when we have that communication with with the kingdom, mm-hmm. when we have a communication with our heavenly Father, then this is how we we rise above, and that we mm-hmm. start to get those instructions. Mm-hmm. We start to con- we continue to evaluate ourselves. Yeah. God continues to speak to us. Mm-hmm. And this this is how we rise above this the circumstance because we that's this is where, and I think about this too that you know when we're when we're rising above or we're we're below. When we rise above, that's the stability, that's the peace, that's the the best part where you can hear. And we've had the analogy before where you're in the that restaurant and tons of stuff is going on. It's loud. It's hard to hear, and you're struggling. That's living on in that chaos. That it's, it's it's hard to see past that. Yeah, that's what Paul said, far above. Mm-hmm. In the book, Paul says, far above me, look to the hills. Amen. Far above me, out of the, out of the uh, what you call the area of chaos, like you said. Right. He said, look beyond that. You know, you got to be mature to be above that. Because immaturity leads you to Ephesians chapter 2, past time. You, know, you never got out of that past, and mm-hmm. you still, you still back and forth. You still you want to do this, you want to do that. But when time comes and you really need God, it's not that He says He's gonna fail, but He lets you know why didn't you seek Me when you really wanted mm-hmm. Me? And I had you on the road, but the cares of the world pulled you back. And and and, and hear me when I say this: these kind of messages are not fun. People don't like to hear this. Mm-hmm. They they, they want to hear you entertain them. How I many houses you gonna get? How much money you got coming? Bless all these things, but in order to have those things, you got to understand the rudiments. <laughs> if you have no foundation on how to get there, what you gonna have? You know, you gotta have to have a foundation. If there's no foundation, you know, Corinthians. First Corinthians says, we look at First Corinthians. Of course, Paul goes through the occasion in First Corinthians. He's talking to the people of Corinth over chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. He's trying to get them to understand the basic necessities of receiving the kingdom of God. He mm-hmm. tells them to drink the milk. But a person who don't understand that want to eat the meat. Right. This is where the entertainment comes in at. Right. Because what entertainment, it, it, it pulls you, it looks over your faults. Oh, Lord. Mm-hmm. We can leave that alone. Let me wife go ahead and finish. Mm. Let's, let's look at the eighth verse. And it's finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good rapport, mm-hmm. if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going back to, to mm-hmm. rising above. How do we get past that cast? How do I even rise above? Praiseworthy. Now he said praiseworthy. Mm-hmm. This is how you rise above. The things worth praying for. Go back to what we said again. Entertainment blows you away. You miss the things you need mm-hmm. to work on yourself. So you take the word of God, was it first Corinthians eleven twenty three? Mm-hmm. You blow past that because you don't want to examine yourself. Since you caught up in entertainment. Man, I'm just coming to see y'all straight. Y'all know I come, I come right there. And this kind of teaching, they don't, you know, they don't like this kind of teaching. They label me as Bill of Villain. I mean, you know what I'm saying? But this is what it is. Amen. Whether you like it or not, I'm just I'm just one of those apostles come right there with you. I'm not going to play with you. I'm just I'm mm-hmm. just telling you the truth. 
You can't allow yourself to get continued caught up in buildings, cliques, clubs, titles, robes, and events. You just can't do that. Amen. You got to understand there's going to come a time that you're going you to walk up. It ain't listening. Ain't but one line going to the count. Amen. I don't know what they're telling you. What theologies or what kind of ideologies or whatever. Ain't but one line going to the kingdom. Ain't but one line going to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. The separation comes out there. Now you understand what I'm saying? That's not going to be in the line for the apostles. That's not going to be in the line for the bishops. Whatever you want to put yourself, whatever category Amen. you want to put yourself, or elevate yourself to. Y'all mean, y'all kind of look at me, look. Swinging and bobbing. One line. Next you come, next you going to go. Amen. That's the way it is, partner. The Bible says you got to give account. If your account of the things you know you deal with in life has been smeared over by entertainment and fluff, it's really on you. You you, you chose that. And, you went for that. And eventually all that stuff's going to go away. You know, the, the entertainment. Or even, like, let's look at the entertainment in our lives. We can do things to get our sights off of our circumstances. We, we can, we can um, get distracted. We can, many, many distractions in our life. But when it comes down to it, we still have our life. life is we still have, we still have our circumstances. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what we do every day, and as we're giving you these scriptures, write them down. As we're going through the scriptures, God gives us so much power in the scriptures. King Coach he gives us so much knowledge. Yeah, that's that's your that's F This is how yeah, yeah, this is how God it. talks yeah. to us. Yeah. That's up this to you. is God how yeah. God prepares us. This is how yeah. God helps us put on our armor. Yeah. Because we're going to need the armor one time and I'd rather be prepared for when that fight comes no. than I have that armor on. No, he said be ready in season out of season. That's right. You gotta constantly be ready. And you have to, you, we have to go through this training every day. Throw a rock at you and knock your head off. Mm -hmm. Because have you ever been, have you ever had something come in your life that you weren't expecting? That's what I'm telling you. That's what I just said. Mm -hmm. You get up off your knees and praying. Man, let me tell you something. I'm just going to be, you know, I, I come to jet, mm -hmm. I come real quick with it. I was in my house. And most of my friends in Saginaw know my brother Greg. And it was his birthday, and I still grieve about this, mm -hmm. and it bothers me, you know. But I was laying down after coming out for service, and I was praying. Mm -hmm. I just got on praying. A lot of people don't believe this, but I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm a living witness. Mm -hmm. I just got on praying, and then I got a call. I just laid down, didn't I? Yeah, yep, yeah. I got a call, you know, your brother passed away. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. You don't know. Mm -mm. You may fight a good fight, but baby, if you don't have the understanding about a fight, if you keep getting carried away by fluff, if you ain't prepared, and your sound, your sound, your foundation is full of fluff and entertainment, mm -hmm. when it come down to nitty gritty, on the strong survive. Mm -hmm. You gonna find out what you made out of. Paul makes that very clear. In the area of First Corinthians, in that eleventh, that third chapter, in that eleventh verse, he said, "There's no the foundation that no man can build." Amen. And that which is Jesus Christ. You know what he's saying? That's the confession of being with Him. When God's on your side, He's more than the world against you. Amen. If God be for you, Amen. But if you go on consistent, insisting on it, you have a problem. Everything in life. It's in the dark come to light. He's going to show you up. Amen. Amen. That's that's a, that's strong right there. They don't, they don't want this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, they holler at you, hoop at you, give you entertainment. I mean, they, they, the, church been, the church has been rocked to sleep. Rocked to sleep on anything. There are more that's mega right. churches. And all they base their numbers, all they base those as numbers. Numbers and crowds. They get rich and fat, live in nice homes, have nice jets. That's all they live on. Remember, remember what Jesus said. Everyone needs stones. Mm -hmm. They already fallen. You just ain't seen them yet. If you don't get yourself together, understand you're the temple. The building don't make you. If 
you can't get yourself in your room and where your knees are and find out who you are, brother, it's going to be too late. Especially for the ones who don't know. Church is now real legal up more or less in the entertainment world. The Bible told us to come from among them. Mm -hmm. We with the BET Awards now. We with the Soul Awards now. We recognize our art to be recognized with. And people love it. Oh, yeah, it's cool. We dress any kind of way. We <laughs> come before God, portray to be in any kind of way. We don't even know, we don't even know the world off from his church no more. <laughs> no, man. I mean, seriously. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not, not chopping up with your real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't be Beyonce in the church. You see what I'm saying? There's a way you got to carry yourself in the church as a man and as a woman. You know what I mean? Because there's just many more devils in the church than there is in the world. Matter of fact, more in the church. Because that's what a hospital is. If you want me to chop it up with you, because I will. You got to understand and realize the enemy is like, oh, he's coming. He coming. Don't worry about it. He coming. Amen. You were, you were saying something that made me, made me think about this, too. Resist? That. Or sober. It's eight. Or yeah. Seven. But casting your cares is. Yeah, this this one, too. Well, you're um, going to humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. Mm -hmm. You humble yourself is understanding that you have no more power. So your measure is no longer your measure. It's the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that's in you. That's right. So, in other words, I cast everything I have on God. Mm -hmm. It's no longer me that do it. It's Him. That's right. So the battle is no longer mine. Just like with Jehoshaphat. Mm -hmm. When he came to Jehoshaphat now, over in Second Chronicles, what, that 20 and 15? Jehoshaphat complained about all the people coming against him, yada, yada, You just, I said, like, man, listen here, you Jehoshaphat and all you inhabitants of Judah. The battle ain't yours. You got it twisted, partner. It's mine. And I turned the clock on, man, I, I turned the clock on who I see fit. Amen. Nobody knows the man of God. You can't question God. You can't if you want to. Amen. You know, I was you were saying something about about you know the enemy coming, yeah, and when we on that seventh verse, cast all your cares upon him, for mm -hmm. he cares for you. Mm -hmm. That that's that part of living above yeah. what your circumstances are. Yeah, that depends. We depend on anxiety, pressures, all the stuff that's facing the world today. Mm -hmm. Kids, anxiety, depression, death. We hear suicidal deaths more than ever before. Mm -hmm. He's showing you. He's showing you, man. The Bible said there come a time when the Christians won't even understand the very battle which they're going through. Matter of fact, he said he let the devil look like a light of anger. He didn't look like a light. He'll preach, talk, and do everything, just like what you think he would do. But Amen. he'll lead you straight off the cliff. Amen. He'll preach. He'll prophesy. He'll speak the word of God. He said everything just like you want him to say, and he'll run you right off. He'll lead you to believe that he got himself. Amen. And he'll take you straight out. How, how do we? Okay, so I'm in the mix, midst of my chaos of life. Mm -hmm. How do I come above it? Because you, be yeah. How how like you might say to me. You don't know. You don't know my life. You don't know my chaos. You mm -hmm. don't. You don't know my circumstances. Mm -hmm. And how how can you tell me how t that I should rise above it? How do I even get past it? Because a lot of times people, when they're in their their mm -hmm. stuff they of life, they blind. They don't know how to come out of it. Well, that's the excuse they use. You mm -hmm. don't know me. Mm -hmm. You don't know what I've been through. Well, welcome to the team, partner. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We we have, we've all had stuff. Everybody up in this thing. Mm -hmm. You ain't the only one. Whether well, it's been death in your family, illness and sickness in your body, losing close ones. Come on, man. We're mm -hmm. all in this thing together. Amen. Like your boy that said CNB. We, you know, <laughs> we're all in this together. Amen. So we're all going through challenges and changes. What is Isaiah? Isaiah said the very word. Mm -hmm. Though all of our sins were like scarlet. Matter of fact, Romans 8 and 23 backs it up. For all has fallen short. That's right. And come short of the glory of God. No matter if you're an apostle, no matter if you're a prophet, I don't care where you are in the body of Christ. Baby, you ain't above attack. How do we how do we get out of that? Your mindset. Amen. That's what Romans says. He makes it very clear. Romans chapter twelve, right? Mm-hmm. I beseech 12. thee therefore, brother, 
What did he say? By the mercies of God. That's what you get. Yeah. That's what's going to help you. Yeah. There's mercy in place. That's right. Now, y'all don't get upset at me when I say it. When your crazy self don't even understand how to come out, God said, I'm going to give you the mercy. Mm-hmm. Because you don't know how to gain the mercy yourself because you end up leaning to your own understanding and not acknowledging I'm the one who can bring you out. Because you want a way to seem that you want to bring it out. And you right. go on to Jim, Joe, Mike, John, mm-hmm. and everybody else, mm-hmm. other than going to your closet, seeking me and understanding how I need to come out of this situation. You will seek the flesh before you see God. I'm, I'm talking to you. you don't Amen. Listen to this. Amen. Because God is telling you in the midst of your trials that your casting, your cares, has to come through the area of of the kingdom. It's got to be filtered through the Holy Spirit. That's right. Romans tells you. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, think about the mercy. We're mm-hmm. talking about Romans chapter five. We're talking about justified by faith. We have free access. That you now present your body as a living, look what he's telling you, sacrifice. Not any kind of way. Holy. That's right. Holy doesn't deal with entertainment. It's a strict way. The Bible says mm-hmm. wide as you talk about that. Mm-hmm. You say, wide is the path, mm-hmm. narrow is the gate. That's right. And few walk there in. Mm-hmm. When ways don't seem the way we want to seem, we fall out, we bail out. Now, I don't think I said that. That's when your mind gets tripped up. You're going to yeah. think what you said about mm-hmm. it. Don't, that, that don't sound right to me. That's why he a lot of people say, that don't register my spirit. Well, you need to get yourself together, partner. <laughs> you, got, you got something twisted there. Because when you don't understand the principles of the power of the kingdom of God was able to do, the Bible said you hadn't seen, known, or heard. So how are you going to judge the spirit in the individual? You don't even know them. If you don't know them, then you don't know God. Because you say, how can you hate them who aren't created? You disagree with your brother and sister, and you ain't even trying to talk with them no more. Yeah, you're going on judging them mm. about how they are. No, nobody knows who you are. But you got to understand, far above all, princes, powers, and dominion, not only named in this world, but everything that come leads you to understand and realize that in your life, it's going to be the power of God that's going to advance you out of every circumstance and every situation. The Bible says, unless you live above measure, think of yourself as being too, I know the world, I know all this. No, no, no don't, like, don't like care about your ideology or theologies or technologies, whatever knowledge you got. Mm-hmm. The Bible declared according to 1 Corinthians, if you don't understand this, then it's got to come from me and me only. Because you I give you stuff, Amen. Never, it ain't even in the book. <laughs> amen. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> who are you gonna believe? That's that's, right. that's what Peter said. Who are you gonna believe? We have to do our our due diligence. We have to prepare ourselves every day. This is a little head too heavy for people to think about because you come you come raw like this, they can't they, you know they, they, they find themselves you know they either gonna come against it, or they're not gonna understand it. Because it's such a powerful conviction. Amen. Hell is waiting to bust. Hell waiting to bust everybody. Why don't you gonna walk right? And that's what preachers need to get back under sin. Tell her pleading the blood. You ain't nobody pleading the blood no more. It's all entertainment and talk. You ain't nobody say I plead the blood by the name of Jesus. I declare by all the four winds of the Holy Spirit. I shut down every. You hear people saying that? They want to tell you stories and give you entertainment and bring cars and motorcycles and events and things and put big posters and lights and all this stuff that make they wanna they wanna they wanna they wanna take your mind. They wanna send you into a place of entertainment. Mm. Let's go to this. You had said this verse earlier. I said, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. Well, you got to understand that sober first. Mm-hmm. If you if you neglect the sober and the vigilant, you're caught right there. You, you're going to be caught by the roar. Because the Bible said, be sober. I got to think rationally and not foolishly. Vigilant. I need to go with every understanding through the Holy Spirit to make sure I'm guided properly through this devouring territory that I'm walking through. Mm-hmm. I just need to understand it. If I don't understand it, then guess what? He waiting. That's right. Because he wanted what he want to do. He want to devour a humble man. The Bible says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Mm-hmm. You want wisdom, ask God. You want experience, ask God. If you don't know how to deal with the situation, don't lean to your own Proverbs. So God. He said, everything you do in prayer. Mm-hmm. Do it in prayer. This is that the part which you were just saying in prayer. Then nine is resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood 
in the world. Let's see, resist the devil goes back to verse, go back up to, the, to eight. You want to resist the devil, this is how you resist the devil right here. Sober and vigilant. Mm -hmm. He didn't say run. Now you stay in your ground. You stand there just like a security guard. That's Don't right. you move your ground. Don't let nobody, nobody come tell you nothing. People too quick want to tell you, a, you know. Being steadfast in the faith. Yeah. People want to tell you the devil. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to hell. You ain't got no right to tell nobody the devil ain't going to hell. The Bible said we all got some hell in us. And don't want us, don't now want us want to go to hell. So what in hell do we want? Mm -hmm. I don't want to go to hell. You don't want to hell either. So why you want to send somebody to hell and you got hell in you? The word <laughs> told you. He said, look, we all fall short. Oh, you got some in you. You got a wildcat in you. They just ain't seen it yet. Because they ain't the fly on the wall in your household. Can I get inside your business? <laughs> Amen. You don't want to listen to this. Mm -hmm. Quit running out the fluff and conversation and things that make you feel good. Valentine's, pricks, perks, all that stuff, numbers, don't mean nothing when it comes down to entering into the kingdom of God. The Bible right. says every soul has got to get in one size hole. Mm -hmm. Every grave that's done the same size. Whether way you leave here, ashes, burnt, whatever, your soul's got to stand before that's right. the kingdom. you got to give account, man or woman, God. I don't know who, who told you that, what kind of philosophy they're eating for. Your faith doesn't consist on the measure of things, mm -hmm. how much you have around you, how big your crowd is, how many people you have. It don't consist of that. The Bible tells you that. Men consist of your things being big based on the fact whether they're looking at the scales, mm -hmm. mega churches, entertainment. Watch these cats. Watch these cats. Amen. had an opportunity to be there several times. I came out of school with some great pastors, great leaders. As a matter of fact, Bishop, when I came out of here, was the number one seminary school in the South down here. We had great mega pastors that come out of there. I said that a lot with people like E.V. Hill, uh, people like uh, I on Jesse Jackson and guys right there. I said on guys like Miles Monroe, some of the great guys right here in Texas, some of the biggest names you can see. I didn't want to go that route. It's just something God didn't want me. We had churches. Mm -hmm. we didn't want to go that route we saw what it was taking us to it was pulling us off course I probably wouldn't be living if I stayed that course because I was trying to keep up with things and make people please it asked me like I was a pastor or leader it wasn't nothing man it ain't mm -hmm. nothing your church and your faith doesn't insist on things don't get it twisted don't let nobody bamboozle your fool you. read the word of God for yourself understand it don't let nobody play with your head, man, woman of God. Amen. A robe, a ring, a title, a building, a name, an alphabet behind your name, don't make you nothing. When you get to heaven, listen to me. Hear me good when I tell you this. Once you get to the kingdom of God, there is no more mercy and grace. Wherever mm -hmm. you go, there's no more mercy and grace. L listen to what happened to the rich man. He wanted to get a pardon out of the place that he was sentenced to. Can I get some water? Can I go to him? No, you, can, you, you made your choice. Ain't no mercy and grace in the kingdom. Because it's a perfect place. Ain't no pardons in hell because it's an imperfect place. That's what you chose. Amen. You're permanent. He said it's a great gulf. Ain't no way I can switch now. You got your chance right here, right now, where Jesus writes down on the cross that you may have that right, that you may have mercy and grace, that you can be justified by faith according to Romans chapter 5. You have free access to come to Christ anytime you want to. You got to go through no man. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to get you to understand that. If you want somebody to help you with some information, then ask them. You have Amen. your Bible studies. Have what you want. And nobody come tell you because you ain't ordinated. You ain't this and that. Man, look, if you don't get yourself and run, if you don't get out of here with that stuff, you do want to be trained and understand about the word of God. So you want to seek somebody that can help you when you're walking and doing the work. You do want that. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Let nobody bamboozle you. Let's go ahead and wrap up with this last verse. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his et eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Amen. Well, that's what life is, suffering. Mm -hmm. But you got to suffer the right way or to see that eternity. You know, you've been established in strength and they may settle you. Him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen.
man. Baby, mm. he gave it to you in Genesis 126. You better read that Genesis 126. Amen. Gave, behold, I've given you, he gave you power. Over, he gave you dominion. You know what supremacy is? Mm. Focus on living above. Continue to, to get your armor on every single day. Because we, we have to be prepared. What you have on that 12 right there? What you put that 12? Peek at your list for me. <laughs> okay. Peek at your list. We're going to go ahead and, and, and wrap up. I, I want to see if you can close us out in prayer. Oh, yeah. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we always bless you and honor you. Lord, sometimes we always don't know the things we need to know. Sometimes we always know the way we need to go. But, Father mm -hmm. God, we like sheep sometimes led astray by the things of the world that try to lead us to slaughter. But, Father God, we are going to slaughter for the purpose of what you want us to be in your heavenly realm. Father God, I thank you for the ears to hear. Yes. Lord. I thank you for the hearts to conceive in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that every man, woman, boy, and child will be exalted above measure to the point that they understand it's you, Father God, out of the way of chaos, living above the very chaos, as the woman of God says, that we may truly know and understand. In the time and season we live in, Father God, we need you more than ever before. Help us and teach us to call on you, Father God, during our distressed times. In the times that seem to be imperfect, Father God, let us lighten into our own, but let us acknowledge you, Father God, in every direction and every way, that we may clearly know and understand, Father God, you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Look over this ministry. Yes. Look over the man and woman of God who continue to push this ministry in the right yes, direction. Lord. With all the authority that comes from the kingdom of God, the wisdom, the understanding, the prayer. Father, we thank you. We impart that into our listeners today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Father God, to go into the household. Give them the strength that they need. Whatever it may be, Father God, that they may be suffering through. Father God, make it easy for them. That they may truly know that you are God, a creative designer and an engineer. Father God, we bless you. We thank you. As we look over our children, look over my sons, my daughters. Keep them safe, Father God, as all the other children, all the other mothers and fathers and their kids and their daughters. Bless them, Father God, abundantly. Show them the direction in which they may go. Lord, we're living in such uncertain times that we don't even know. We're war going on every corner of the earth, not just in the area of Germany, but here in the U.S., Father God, among our leaders, Father God, bring them to subtlety. Bring them to subtlety that they may clearly see and understand, Father God, the plan that you have is really more than what we can see. Father God, we thank you. We bless you. In your precious and powerful name, we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, man, woman, God. We uh, thank God for the uh, pod being talent. We want to thank God, you guys over here, our spirit team. Thank you, God, for being with us. And uh, we announce God's spirit team. I'll go ahead and announce them. We thank Spirit for being with us. Uh, and I have to be pod being team for being with us. All the men of God's with us, do I ask the uh, cast team? Thank God for being Pray to see if you want to do. We want to ask you to do two channels. Or do I want to ask you Facebook channels, uh, podcast channels, uh, pod addicts. I was watching all the stations. I heard that it was just thank you guys for just being with us. We hope we had said something that can help you in the walk of Christ. But remember, stay focused, live above, not in the chaos. Amen. God bless you guys. Y'all take care. Amen. I'm going to get out of this one.